Good morning, guys. Uh, good morning. Um, this is CJ back once again when editor narrated uh, time lapse of my artwork. Uh, and today we'll be taking a look at a real time video. Um, I don't do often enough of these because um, some of my videos would get really long if they're presented in real time format. Um, but this one is um, something I did for Facebook's Daily Spit Paint group. So since I did it for the Facebook's Daily Spit Paint group, this one's easy to do in real time because um, it's 30 minutes. It's done in 30 minutes. Uh, if you're not familiar with the rule of the Daily Spit Paint group, um, the rule is that you're supposed to do... Um, you're supposed to do an artwork or a drawing or a finished illustration um, in 30 minutes or as finished as, as much as you can. I mean, it doesn't have to be like super perfect or whatnot. Um, so yeah, you're given prompts every day and you're supposed to work on, on, on the prompts for 30 minutes or whatnot. Um, one of the prompts that um, I did is this one right here which is black silver 52 so like the title I, i've been titling my artwork based on the prompts that i've been getting um and the prompt that i got for this one was called black silver and i couldn't really think of how to illustrate that other than a race i mean that was like the first thing that came to my mind black silver sounded like a like a racehorse or like a nickname for a racer or something uh i mean i don't know I, i'm not really sure what my train of thought was but it was definitely somewhere along the lines of raising and so um i instantly came up with the idea or that was the first impression that was the impression that i got when i read black silver and so since I got the impression of black silver, the very, very first thing that I thought of was doing um, a hover bike, essentially. Um, yeah, a hover bike, um, like for hover bike racing and whatnot, um, or like a motorbike, but I decided to be unique. Instead of doing a motorbike, I did a hover bike. So, so yeah, uh, that's kind of what I thought of and that's what I came up with. And so now that we've talked about where my idea came from, um, it wasn't very amazing or whatnot. Um, it was just really simple. Um, yeah, let's talk about what's going on in the video. What's going on in the video is me just making my noise again. Uh, this is one of my techniques. This is one of the things that I do. I just put some color down just to have something in my canvas instead of just it being blank and nothing going on i would put a bunch of stuff uh in it and for this particular exercise i decided to pull up Krita's textures uh, brushes um, they have a selection of textures brushes you can see it on the right right now um, Basically, I just pulled the, that group up. It's a collection of brushes that comes standard with Krita when you install it. And I was just messing around. I was just putting in some random shapes. Uh, I know that I was going to do a hover bike. So the very first set of colors that I put in were in the general shape of a hover bike. Um, and that's like the brownish purplish um uh colors hues that you see in the middle um i set that up because i knew that i wanted like a bike essentially so and i was really surprised about this because um typically i lately i've been doing the sketch before doing the random shapes but um for this one, I did it the old way that I was doing things, which is I make the shapes first just to kind of inform me of what the general shape 
of the object that I'm going to be painting at is going to look like. Um, so typically I've been starting out with shapes and then I do the sketch. Um, but lately I've kind of reverted back to doing the sketch first and then the shape. Um, so it's kind of refreshing to just like look back at this particular speed paint because I realized, oh yeah, I did it the old way that I've been doing instead of the new way that I've been doing lately, which is sketch first and then color things in. Um, so yeah. Um, so basically the sketch is just pretty much simple. I mean, the, the shape that I've laid down, um, initially uh the purple and the green the brownish green yellow green purple um since i kind of created that general shape um earlier it kind of informed my decision making process and doing this outline you know where i kind of knew that the general shape of the bike was going to be almost the same shape as those set of colors that i initially laid down so um so yeah um and looking back at this now i, I just realized that uh well i didn't realize um i kind of made note about this when when i first viewed the video uh in fast forward motion I, I make notes basically before doing this recording piece um i initially drew the girl as or the right i initially drew the writer as a female that was always my intention but i realized in the end product that the way i kind of shaded the person it kind of doesn't make it look obvious that she's a female um at the very end of it so and i didn't even um realize that that was a problem up until like now <laughs> i just realized that now i'm just like oh yeah i she's kind of looking more like a male now but i originally intended for her to be female as obviously indicated by my sketch that i just did this now where it's you know i set her up as a female um but yeah whether she reads as a female or not it's yeah it's not very good but it's a speed paint so i i think i can be excused that uh that little mistake so yeah but now that I've finished my sketch, I'm back to making some more noise again. Um, just grabbing my favorite, favorite random mech brush. I, I love this brush so much. I don't know why, but it just makes like, great shapes. And ever since I set it to make different hues, you know, it just, it got even better for me. You know, I use it all the time. Look at it. You know, just laying down some colors, you know, just so that it's not all plain colors um and it, uh, of course the, the reason why i do this is because my my since my technique is all about the blending you know just like now the smudging i mean that's the reason why you know i love to put down as many colors as i can because once i you know blend it all in it kind of just gets into this nice goopy wonderful mess so yeah um but yeah, here's my blending brush. Just kind of just blending everything out. Um, typically, when I blend, I blend it into recognizable shades. But since we're doing the, since I'm doing the background right now, I'm not as concerned about recognizable shades because it's just the background. Um, the only thing I cared a lot about was the shadow, uh, as you can see. Like I, I was really adamant about preserving that. Um, and then I decided to just come back and add some more textures. So I really like this half dotted pattern um, that the old printers used to make. The old printers used to make this dotted pattern. Um, and yeah, um, I thought that that was like really cool. Because a lot of the speed paints that I was doing initially for Facebook speed paint group, um, initially a lot of them didn't have backgrounds because I, I don't have enough time to work on the background. So I just try to put down as much as I can um, my general idea. And, and when I do that, the background just looks so weak. Um, and for this one, I was going through the same problem too. Like I didn't know what to do with the background. So I just pretty much just put some patterns in the background. But this time around, I actually like the pattern 
compared to most of them, I typically don't like the pattern. <laughs> so yeah, I thought it worked out very nicely with this one. Um, so right now I'm just like going back with a little bit more multiply brush just to kind of add some more shadows. And then right before that I did some color dodge. So, um, just to get some highlights. And then as soon as I got those in, I merged the outline layer with the background finally, because now I'm going to blend the bike into a recognizable shape, which again is like the most important part. I mean, because, you know, um, the background, I didn't care how I blend it. You know, if everything gets messed up then everything gets messed up. But for the bike, I really needed for it to be in that general area of where the bike is you know so i'm basically like doing my blending inside the lines you know like i'm coloring a coloring book so so yeah as soon as i do this um i'll end up with a base paint and the base paint is pretty much what i would do the details on or what i would paint my details on um and again the detailing part is um fairly simple um all i really do is just kind of add in the shadows uh delineate my edges so the edges are clear you know so it's clearly understood like for example where her legs are versus where the bike is like right now it's kind of messy because it's all blended in you know you can't really tell if that's her leg or if that's part of the bike you know but when i detail it in I would delineate that by, you know, marking the edges, you know, with a certain color or sometimes adding shadows or highlights, just depending on the situation. Um, and that would basically pop her leg out, out of the background noise of, of the hover bike. So, yeah. Okay, so I accidentally trimmed the image into three, 300 pixels when what I was trying to do was trying to trim it into 3100 um, for the canvas. So yeah, I, I made a mistake. What am I doing? Why, why did I open that box and then close it? It didn't make the mistake again. Why? What is going on here? What? There you go, put that zero in there. There you go, okay, there's a zero. So yeah, um, I like to round things off, that's just me. Uh, I feel like rounded off canvas sizes, um, when you try to size it up, uh, it gives you like a good nice size instead of like this weird random number or something. So it's just a, like a habit I have. Um, absolutely not necessary for me to make it 3,100. Like, there's no need for it to be that exact of a number. But it's just a thing that I do. So, yeah. Um, so now I'm lassoing the girl. And the reason why I'm lassoing the girl is because I realized that her colors are a little too similar to the bike. And I really needed for her to pop out. And this is probably my biggest complaint about my technique. Um, now, somebody had mentioned this about my technique before. Um, 
milk, I think, from Sketchstone. I think she's the one who mentioned this. I have a tendency to get really muddy colors. Um, and it's not by intention. You know, when I do my... Uh, by base paint or I mean you could see like at the very beginning I just put down a bunch of random noise because I knew I was gonna all blend them away anyways you know and the reason why I do that is because sometimes I get really really interesting color variations you know and that's the reason why I do what I do where I do where I put in a bunch of colors a bunch of noise and then just blend them all in because sometimes when I do that or a lot of the times when I do that um, I get really good color combinations. The problem though is that sometimes I don't get good color combinations. Um, sometimes I just get really muddy colors, you know. And somebody has mentioned that before, you know, like I get muddy colors in some of my paintings. And, you know, sometimes it works effectively and sometimes it's not very effective. And so in the case of this painting, the the girl, the female writer was just disappearing too much into the background of, or not into the background, but disappearing too much into the colors of the bike. So it looks like it's just one object and not two separate objects. It doesn't look like it's a hover bike with a rider. It just looks like a hover bike and this person sticking out of it or something. So it didn't look very appealing. So I had to do something where I had to switch out the hues. But none of the hues that I came up with I like. And so I had to settle for something. Which the one I settled for is just too still too close similar wise. But the other colors were just too conflicting with the colors I've laid down already. That I just decided to just go for this orange look. Instead of like the other ones that I came up with. So so yeah it's it's still a work in progress my technique i mean yeah for me um it's like i i like the color mess that some that i sometimes get but i don't like the too muddy colors that i sometimes get so it's kind of like a balance that i have to keep working on um and it's basically just something that I just need to like watch out for in my paintings. Um, and for my long illustrations, that's not so much as a problem because, you know, I, I recognize that some there are color issues. And so I could always just work on it in a long illustration. So, for example, if this was if I had designated this for if I had de designated this as an artwork that I want to work on and I want to develop. In the 30 hours that I will, it will take me to develop this piece, I know that by the time I'm finished with it, I'm almost, I've almost pretty much addressed some of the color issues. Not all, because not all paintings are perfect. I mean, there's still going to be flaws at the end of it, but for the most part, it wouldn't be as messy color-wise. Um, so yeah, but... For speed paints, sometimes the muddiness can be an issue. Um, not so much as on this one though. I mean, after I did the highlights, and I think what unified the whole piece together is this green highlight that I'm putting in. Um, when I didn't put the green highlight into the girl, especially her leg, it, it looked kind of off. But now that I started putting all the green highlights, um, together with her body i put it on her body first i just remember that but um putting the green highlights just kind of just unify it because then it just makes it look like she's under a green light or something so um that proves harmonious or kind of adds like a harmonious quality to the illustration so yeah so right now i'm just going back doing some more edges uh And then um, adding the shadows at the bottom, um, I realized that the bottom isn't uh, very well defined, so I decided to just put in some of the shadows in there. And then also working on 
the rest of it. And then I'll just go back and add a few highlights to just really separate the pieces. Um, so yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much what I, I do with detailing is just kind of look at the object and just pretty much just acknowledge where the light is. And then based on that light, I kind of just refine the look of it more, you know, by working on the 3D aspect of of the piece that I'm working on. So yeah. So when I first initially thought of doing the race, um, not once did I think of, oh yeah, I just remembered. I wrote 72 instead of 52. Um, that was her original number. I just saw, saw that. Um, when I intended of Black Silver being the name of the racer or whatnot, um, I, I knew that I have to put it in the bike somehow. You know to indicate that this is what black silver is it's a racer um and i wanted to make that clear and so i knew that i was going to write some text into the bike um but i didn't have the intention of using red like i don't know where the idea of the red came from i mean that was like total left field for me you know i, I didn't have like a conscious decision to just choose red um I just felt like I needed something that wasn't already in the color palette that I have in my canvas and red just happens to be not in the canvas so I went for red um, and I love it I dig it because I think that red really just kind of pops out you know um, so yeah it kind of draws attention to to this text right here uh, black silver 52 and so that kind of you know clues the viewer that oh okay so that's how he interpreted black silver is i interpreted it as a racer basically so yeah but i love those colors uh, i thought how i did that was really cool
so this piece is pretty much done um thank you guys for watching this real time video with me it's refreshing that we can watch something in real time instead of uh watching something sped up um so yeah thanks for watching this along with me and hear me talk about it um i'll see you guys in the next episode good night